Hello, this is Grandmaster Timur Gareev, and uh, I will show you guys several cool examples of me playing blindfold chess in bullet matches. This games so were played one by one, one game at a time. Uh, if you guys wonder how it's done, uh, you can see me playing actually a blindfold exhibition match on several uh, boards, uh, and that uh, is available in one of the videos that I uploaded recently. So here we go, we got an open Sicilian going on, I'm playing uh, black pieces and this is the opening that I would recommend uh, to all of you guys watching this video. Play open positions, play positions that are going to get you in those complex situations where you got to uh, apply all of your tactical skills to play the best game, to stay in the game sometimes. So here we go, d4, and um, this is a this is the breakthrough in the center that connects white's pieces really well, gains the advantage, engages black's uh, army immediately. So black responds with a very natural c takes d. Knight captures, knight comes out. Here's a classical uh, blunder that white could make right here. Let me switch it to uh, analysis board. And we're gonna put it right about here. Let's see how that's gonna work out. Here we are, let's continue on with our analysis. And uh, the little trick that I wanted to show you guys is, um, okay, at this point the knight is defending the, the square on e5. White may be tempted to go ahead and remove the knight and push for e5 attacking the knight. Now, that's not a very good idea since here black is not going to be moving the knight but is going to go ahead and make this check capturing the pawn on e5 whatever white is uh, going to defend bishop d2 knight c3 the pawn on e5 is gone knight c3 is the natural idea and here i decide to go for this uh, adventures e5 so this this is not uh, my favorite move in this position. Uh, I would go for I would rather go for d6, some version of a dragon with g6, e6. But in this game, I chose e5 idea. Knight b5 is a natural continuation. The knight is heading towards the d6 square. And here, I played bishop b4 d6 is really the way to go, the main line, bishop g5 and here black needs to get rid of that knight on b5 since let's say if bishop e7 right away for one thing d6 is hanging, bishop cannot capture and then knight is coming to d5 so this is this is a pretty bad situation for black so black needs to get rid of the knight once knight retreats there's a couple of versions of what could happen bishop could capture an f6 or a knight could retreat right away and once again bishop can take an f6 or knight d5 and here we got a situation where this knight on a3 is on mediocre spot at this point so c3 is played and knight comes back to life heading towards e3 through c2. So this is the main line of Sveshnikov. I try bishop b4 in this um, position just for fun. This is blindfold uh, bullet once again so anything goes. Here I treat the king and I had no intention of capturing on d6 and this position is actually not so good for black. Bishop c4 gives uh, black a lot of trouble my opponent plays queen d3 which is kind of dubious and this allows me to seize the initiative in this game so I jump the knight towards the center and the d6 knight is hanging my opponent retreats and I push for d5 so this is just about all you want to accomplish in Sveshnikov push for d5 bishop is spinning the knight excellent position for me and I capture with a queen so the knight 
does have that square under control. At the same time, the knight is pinned at this point, so I can capture with a queen, and this allows me to consolidate my center, really take charge of the center at this point. Bishop d2, so now the queen is really hanging. I capture the knight, my opponent takes with the bishop, and this allows me to deliver a very unpleasant bishop f5. And now the c2 pawn is hanging, so this put, puts my opponent in a bad spot. Now, knight e3 is, a, is an interesting idea right here. So here we go, knight e3. Uh, last move that white played, um, ma making a fork on the bishop and the queen, forces me to capture the queen. My opponent takes the queen on d5, and here, uh, obviously, in big temptation, and the best move to just make the fork right here towards the king. And the best thing to do is to first capture that knight, which I do. My opponent takes the bishop. I capture the rook and set a little trap right here. So if my opponent picks up that pawn on e5, I'm going to continue knight b4 and get that bishop on d3. My opponent plays king c2 and I continue king e7 once again setting a little trap. Bishop takes knight b4 and uh, I actually win the game right here since my opponent resigned. I have an extra pawn on e5 and let's say rook e1, f6. And more than enough advantage to win the game. Let's take a look at the next example right here, which happened to be same opening, open Sicilian, and actually. Sveshnikov. The only difference, this is uh, an early attempt for e5, and uh, once again I find a deviation early on, knight e2. Really um, not much of a reason to play this way, not recommended, but you know, decided to experiment, why not? Bishop goes to c5, hitting that square enough to, and this is certainly a lesson you could uh, derived from these two games is that bishop c5 is uh, a very nice, it's, it's nice to develop that bishop out there, you know, if white deviates c5, nice square hitting f2, queen b6 becomes a big threat, so I gotta move that knight, and this takes up the square on c3, and here bishop c4 solidifying control over the center, so this is not a big deal, the position may be just about equal. Castle, castle, and black prepares f5, removing the king away from the bishop. Attack. Natural idea right here, f5, or at least very natural looking, since f5 actually creates big weaknesses on the king side knight goes towards the g5 square and here black may not be doing so bad but a move like d6 queen e8 um, would be appropriate to cover some of those weak squares and my opponent uh, didn't realize that however even more natural would be to just play d6 and develop that bishop to either e6 or if my knight goes to f3, bishop g4 retaining excellent chances in this game. f5, knight goes towards f3, wanna go, wanna jump to g5, my opponent continues f takes e, which allows my knight to get active. f takes e uh, looks terrible since my pieces get even more aggressive in this position. However, black had a, a nice idea, d5, creating a fork, blocking my attack, and here, you know, I do want to take on c5, but then black is going to take on c4. So instead of that, I may apply a little trick 
playing intermediate move, capturing on d5, wanting to take on c5. Black, in turn, can come up with another intermediate idea. Making this check on f2 first, and then capturing on d5. So this is nothing special for white. However, if the knight c5, white does retain some advantage. d5 was essential. After bishop b6, knight heads to d6, blocking black's development. The pawn cannot go to d5 anymore. The bishop cannot be developed, and white has a powerful attack coming up. Okay, here at this point, there's no reason to pay attention to that. I actually oversaw there's there was a strong idea just to capture that pawn on e5. However, I played another strong move, knight g5, heading towards f7, and at this point, it's close to impossible for black to save the game. My queen is heading towards h5. Here, queen c7 was essential. After queen h5, the attack is, is very powerful knight f7 and uh, black is just about done in this game my opponent continues h6 which is not a very good move at all and knight f7 finishes this game so very nice simple example uh, I showed you guys a few games from my uh, bullet practice once again that I played blindfolded and uh, will continue this series with some more fun and instructive examples.